Welcome to Unit 4, Video 4. The topic of this video will be on Roman political structure during the Roman Republic. This image you see on the screen here is more detailed than you are responsible for knowing, but it does give really good information on how the political structure worked in the Roman Republic. We've already mentioned in the previous video one aspect of the political structure, which were the tribunes, the representatives for the plebeian class, which was that middle class that was underneath the patricians. Remember, alphabetical. So we're going to take a look at all of the other aspects of Roman political structure here. Leading the Republic were two consuls who shared power. They served for one year and then most stepped down. They led the army and guided the government. So these are two individuals who are ruling and they share the power. Both are in charge of the army and guiding the government. And again, they only rule for one year. The consuls, those two rulers, were elected from among the 300 senators. So there is a senate. A senator is a member of the supreme governing body, originally made up only of patricians. So senators were responsible for making the laws and for making sure everyone was represented. Um, originally, senators were only patricians. Nobody from the plebeian class could be a senator. Therefore, nobody from the plebeian class could be a consul either because consuls were elected from the Senate. Over time, that will change, however. Senators voted on laws. They were only members of the patrician class to begin with, but as I said, later on, plebeians will get involved in that. So this is a really good visual representation of how the social structure worked. Please pay attention to the color coding here for patricians and plebeians. I know they're close, but we'll call this one purple and this one blue. So again, originally all senators and consuls would only be the blue, the patricians. So this is showing a later representation. We have two consuls, which could be at a later time, either a patrician or a plebeian, or both of one or both of the other. We have 300 senators. The consuls are elected from the senators. So these 300 senators originally are only patricians. Later, they will become patricians and plebeians. It could be any mixture of those. We have tribunes who represent only the plebeians, so that lower class. So they represent the plebeians, but they do not have a vote. They are the ones that go to the senators and tell the senators what the plebeians want. And then down here, we have the citizens. Now remember, citizens are adult male when we're talking about being involved in government here. So of these citizens, these adult male citizens, any of these citizens could become a senator or a tribune, or for that matter, a consul from being a senator. Take a look here at the colors. You notice how there are many more of the purple plebeian color than the bluish patrician color. That's a reminder for you that the plebeians were 90% of citizens, whereas the patricians were only 10%. Roman laws were outlined in the 12 tables. They covered topics such as court cases, inheriting property, treatment of slaves, and marriage. We'll take some time during class to look at some of the 12 tables and what they represented, and even the punishments for breaking the laws. Citizenship. Plebeian and patrician men had citizenship rights covered in the 12 tables. Expected, they were expected to pay taxes and perform military service. You will notice from the images above that women from the patrician and plebeian classes were not considered citizenship or were not considered citizens. Uh, slaves, the one in the middle, was not a citizen. Slaves are not citizens. And here you see a big question mark. The question mark has to do with foreigners. So some foreigners were allowed to gain citizenship under certain conditions. An example of a condition that would allow a foreigner to gain citizenship in the Roman Republic would be serving in the army. So some foreigners. So those who had political rights were free adult males and sometimes foreigners. 